Hi, everyone. I'm going to give everybody a minute to join us, and then we will go ahead and get started. I do want to remind everyone that this session is being recorded and will be distributed after our panel. Okay, so it looks like folks are starting to come in. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. My name is Chandler Precht. I am the Associate Director of the Sustainability Management and Science Programs. I also happen to be an alumna of the Sustainability Science Program. I want to thank all of you so much for joining us for today's alumni panel. If you are a recently admitted student, congratulations on your acceptance to these programs. Feel free to use the chat feature to introduce yourselves and the Q&A box to ask any questions that you have for our panelists. We will be, I'll be moderating this, um, but we will open it up to Q&A at the end. We are joined today by five alumni of these two programs. We have Wasfia, Bridge, Tinas, Lily, and Ana Fisina, and I'm going to have the panelists introduce themselves. So let's start with Fia. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Fia Huck. I graduated from the Sustainability Science Program in May 2022. So it's about been about a year now. Um, I did the program full time and I currently work at a risk sciences consulting company where um, I'm an environmental chemist and I look at different chemical contaminants at different sites, do some of the source modeling, um, vein transport modeling, just to see how different contaminants react or interact with the environment and how it um, affects humans and aquatic systems. Great. Bridge? Hi, everyone. My name is Bridge. Uh, I graduated actually just this last May here. Uh, I did the program um, full-time and part-time at the end. Um, I also work up at Lamont Doherty Earth Observatory, um, and I'm still kind of working there in the tree ring lab. And um, right now, just um, working on research. Uh, but that's about it for me. Thanks, Bridge. Tinas? Hi, everybody. My name is Tinas Venter. I just graduated in May. Um, thank you all uh, for having us, for giving us your time. Uh, I currently work at a tech startup that does utility management for commercial real estate properties. And we focus on all things renewable and smart and uh, help uh, property owners and tenants um, manage their solar battery. Um, and we're busy building a virtual power plant package to deploy next year. So fun stuff, fun stuff of that. Uh, excited for this conversation. Awesome. Lily? Hi, everyone. I'm Lily. Um, I also just graduated this May. And right now, I'm also working at Lemon doing coral reef research. I also collaborating with a few startups on the side. Great. Anna? Hello, everyone. I am Anna Cristina, clearly by my name. I'm an international student. I was a full time sustainability management student who also graduated last May, uh, looking for her next opportunity. Also, very excited to talk to you and answer all of your questions. Thank you, Chandler, for this opportunity. Great. So, I'm going to stop sharing just so I could see all of your your faces now and we can we can jump into some questions so what drew you all to these sustainability programs um, and I'd, I'd like for all of you to kind of answer that question you know what's your sustainability story why sustainability Anna do you want to start yeah totally uh so I actually come from a startup slash innovation background and but I always feel like impact was a priority in my career. So I was always trying to, you know, in my day-to-day -day job, really make an impact uh, and knowing that everything that I did was actually for a better good. And then I started really getting interested in sustainability. And as a lot of us, I got greenwashed a lot. <laughs> uh, so trying to understand better how I could do, and this is not a joke, like better shopping decisions. I started to read a lot and I found this whole fascinating world um, I got to learn more about global warming. And at some point I just discovered it was my passion. Uh, I was doing some research. I was actually applying for MBAs. 
Uh, and then I found this wonderful program. I got the chance to apply, got in, and I just felt in my heart that it was like the right place to be at in the middle of New York where everything was happening. So that's how I got here. Great. Lily? I, I came from like a more like science and field research kind of background where for me, it was like every single day, it's like constantly like putting out fires everywhere. And then for me, I wanted to move and like just like pivot more to the like the high level, going back to the root problems so we can actually avoid those fires and it's less like historical. So that's why I wanted to join the, the SUMA program to kind of like see the high level issues, how you can manage those, how you can like communicate and, and like work with all these groups and how collaboration works. So, so I think that was my main journey. Thanks. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so I also had like a very academic background. I majored in chemistry and I kind of felt like it was very theoretical. Um, I was looking for a program where I could apply some of this like science background I had or the skills. And um, I really sh actually struggled to find programs where it was like a combination of um, quality content as well as real world application. So I stumbled upon the sustainability science program, which seemed a perfect combination of those two where I could apply my research background, but also see how um, people in the industry actually work with that. And then you can actually see the outcome. So that was my main reason of why it worked out. Yeah. Bridge. Yeah. So piggybacking actually off of that, I, I also came from you know more of a natural science background um, with ecology. Uh, but I kind of wanted to see a blend of how that was translated into, you know, adaptation and mitigation, especially with um, emphasis on climate resilience on a global scale. So there are a bunch of classes here that can kind of help different facets of working with that. And additionally, um, I, I really wanted to work at Lamont. I saw it, I looked into it and I was like, oh my God, there's so many like smart scientists here. If only I could get, you know, a couple conversations with them just to see like what they're working on, what they're thinking about. And so that was a, definitely a big draw for me as well. And then I guess that's why I've just been sticking around up there. They're going to have to like kick me out at some point. <laughs> You're a lifer now. Pretty much. <laughs> Tinas? Yeah, so I think... Uh... I've always been interested in sustainability and environmentalism. Um, and uh, I, I worked uh, at a high school um, and I helped run, we had a fantastic outdoor education program. And I just, I, I loved taking kids to places they'd never been and, in, and uh, bringing in aspects of environmental stewardship into those uh, sessions uh, and and I kind of realized that I wanted to take a, a a bigger step into that world, and so I looked into a lot of different sustainability uh, programs across the country, and uh, really the reason I wanted to get into this one was because it's in New York City. I have a wife. I am married, and um, uh, we both. This is a decision we made together i could i i uh, wanted to make sure that if i'm make if i'm moving us somewhere for a couple of years that we're we'll both be happy in that space and so uh the, it's a fantastic program at one of the best universities in arguably um the best city in the the country um uh, and i'm in i just graduated from sustainability science so it itself still novel new um the program what the program offered that I really enjoyed is freedom. Uh, a lot of the other programs I applied to and got in at most uh, classes had very little wiggle room. Maybe you pick between uh, A and B course, but really it was a pretty specific focus. Whereas within this program, there's really just what two required courses per um uh, for whether it's SUMA or SUSC, sustainably management or sustainably science, uh, and uh, the rest, you get to craft your degree with the greatest minds in the field to tailor it to your needs when you leave. And that's why I picked the program. Tina, you took all my talking points. <laughs> um, there we go. I wrapped this up. There we go. 
<laughs> yeah. All right. We can close it down. Um, okay. So Bridge brought up that he did the program full-time at the start and then switched to part-time. Bridge, can you kind of speak to what your experience was like switching? I mean, I think it does, it, clearly it shows how flexible these programs are, but can you speak to your experience doing that? Yeah, um, it was pretty seamless, honestly. Um, no, no real issues. I think it it's really, it is, like you said, very flexible and adaptable, and it is a professional program. So say you get an internship or a job while you're doing it, I think that it would be really helpful, honestly, for the program to continue being so flexible, because then you can, you know, work your professional life and then also um, academically as well without really any hindrance. And for me, it went pretty smoothly. Definitely. I don't think there are any plans to take take out the part-time option. Um, so those of you who were international students, Liliana, um, can you speak to what it was like going to going through these programs or programs, excuse me, full time? Of course, um, I was, uh, of course, doing full time, but at the same time, I was also working full time. So there's also sometimes an opportunity, of course, like you have to like kind of like wiggle your time um, a bit more rigorously. But there's like so many classes you can take all the time and and the classes are usually in the evening. So you have more freedom and like you can definitely like just manage your time as, as you see fit the best. And just complimenting what Lily said, like, I feel it is my, for the part-time people, uh, I would say that taking the program full-time is a privilege, but if you can do it, I would highly recommend it because there's so many opportunities that you have on campus, like, taking classes from other programs or networking opportunities or joining clubs, or there's so much going on at Columbia that if you're able to really put in the investment and time to be there full time, you're going to have a great experience. It's totally different. And of course, I had tons of friends that were doing it part time. And sometimes they couldn't show up because of work, because they had to commute like an hour to get to Columbia. Um, but at least my experience was amazing because I got to meet so many more people outside of the SUSI and SUMA communities that right now I feel like are great connections um, to finding a job, to, you know, networking and discussing subjects, not only in sustainability, but other things that are related to the field. Um, so it was amazing being a full-time student. Yeah, Artinas, do you have anything to add? Yeah, we can also add to that a little bit. Um, so I'm also international. I did the full-time program and I think in my experience it was also great echoing what Anna and Lily said um, but it does definitely go really fast I think because I finished it in like a year and a half um, but it's also since the classes are in the evening you have opportunity to do a lot of stuff during the day and I think that was a huge huge advantage I was able to um, work part-time like as a TA and join clubs and do different things that I was able to finish during the day and then attend classes at night so that's a huge advantage. Yeah, I was a part-time uh, a part-time student the entire time. Um, at first, I only worked part-time, but then pretty soon uh, worked full-time. And I there are definitely going to be um, pros and cons to to both uh, situations um, or both scenarios rather. Uh, and um, there were definitely times where I wished I could have just more wholly voted time to extracurricular activities but that i'd say it's not to say you can still do that i was the program rep for sustainability science for a year i was the president of a club for a year and a half um and i was something else in the club before i was the president i don't even remember um and um the I, I attend a ton of the events, uh, whether sustainability oriented or whether it's just shows, uh, still do now that they're alumni events. Um, and I also did research with various professors. So I, I'd say it's definitely possible. You, you're just going to spend a lot of time doing that. If you're also working, you have to make sure you're communicating well. If you have a partner or significant other you have to 
really, really have a good handle on your time management. Um, and because uh, I will say, at least for sustainability science, um, and also when I started, it, it is still a younger program. And there are some classes that if you take the program in a year and a half or even a year, uh, that class might not be offered within that cycle. So um, we have a we have a decent amount of classes that are not offered every semester, just due to the logistics of operating a smaller program. So if you're in sustainability management, some of the very highly desired classes have multiple sections every semester. Uh, whereas for sustainability management, it might be every fall or maybe every third semester even or something. So that that's definitely. Uh, one advantage that if you are part-time is you will have time to cycle through all the classes you want to take. Great points. Thank you all. Um, so, Tinas, you brought up, you know, being in student government, being a student rep, uh, student groups. So many of our panelists participated in student groups. So, um, Anna, I know you were the SUMASA president. Can you speak to your experience being you know, involved in student life? Totally. So to be extremely honest, I was super scared at the beginning because I was like, how am I going to do this? You got to meet so many members of faculty, administration. You actually like, you, you need to put forward initiatives to make the program better. But I feel like it gives you so much exposure like just to give some examples, we we organized a symposium, which is like an annual event for the Sustainability Management Association, uh, and we invited the CEO of Impossible Meats, um, Impossible Foods, sorry, uh, the Chief Sustainability Officer for um, Steve Maiden, for those of you who like fashion, and also Colgate Palmolive. Uh, so it was a wonderful networking opportunity, and now a lot of like. The people from the association are actually in talks with a lot of these companies to get jobs. Uh, so, and we got to meet so many people from other, you know, clubs, just uh, from other schools within Colombia to put together events. Uh, it was amazing. It was a lot of work, yes. Uh, and it's pretty much a volunteer role, but I feel the exposure that it gives you professionally, it's incredible. Uh, there's so many opportunities that pop up after you're done. I'm not, I'm not still officially done, even though I graduated, um, but it's so worth it. It's exhausting, but it's so, so worth it. I feel like it's totally going to pay off. Hopefully, uh, I'll have some good news in the next month. Uh, and thanks to Sumarsa, some networking opportunities that I also had there. So I would highly recommend it. I feel like a lot of people don't get involved as much with clubs or not. The, they're not part of the board. And then like you miss so much because I don't know. Um, but it's, they have wonderful opportunities. They're so valuable. Um, so Masa, I think someone asked in the Q&A, we have social media, Columbia Sumasa. We have a website, in case you're interested, we're looking for candidates for next semester. So I would highly recommend it. We, and you actually become a family with the board you're with because you're like, you know, working like with a wonderful team of professionals uh, who are so talented. So. In case you're interested and you want to do it again, it's it's exhausting, but it's so so worth it. Thanks, Tina. You were also the president of Rescue. Can you speak to that experience a bit? Yes, yes, and, I can. Oh, sorry to cut you off. And Fia, you were the vice president, so maybe you can piggyback off of Tina afterwards. Yeah, um, I mean, I think we at Rescue have. Uh, not the same caliber of events. Samasa is amazing. Um, and uh, everybody should attend those events. I loved also one of my other favorites was Build It Green. But anyway, I'm, I'm not getting paid by them, I promise. So um, so with Rescue, really what, what that was is we, we wanted a space uh, that's a more social space for sustainability oriented people to be able to get together, go on different site visits to how um, uh, maybe uh, waste facilities. Sorry if you guys hear my baby in the background. I'm rocking her off on the side of my foot. Uh, so uh, we're uh, or we did like events at Lamont Doherty um, 
uh, little research projects. One one trip we 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 went up. We got to um, actually help them initiate their plastics um, uh, and oyster counting uh, re research they do at their educational facility and a lot of hikes. So so really like for us that was a space to create um, opportunities to get together and kind of hang out outside of the academic space. Um, and that's, that's really what that was for me. And it's an opportunity to get the school to pay for it. So I always love that. Um, yeah, Fia, if you want to take over. Yeah, I can definitely um, agree with all of that. A lot of hikes. It was really fun. Um, definitely, I think something else to remember is that you're your peers are also your network and you become, you know, really good friends with all the people in your class, and especially in these clubs, like Tinas was saying, it gives you a space outside school to actually um, emerge, submerge yourself in your community. So that was a huge part of my learning experience too, because you're friends with all these different people in different industries and you're learning from them and they become part of your network. I remember in rescue, we were also able to, um, um, basically host a seminar series with Dr. Daniel Walsh, who is, um, I believe he was the director in um, the New York City Mayor's Office of Environmental Remediation. So he had a lot of experience in um, waste and cleanup and to uh, be a part of a seminar with him where he would bring in speakers with like vast amounts of experiences every week where we learned from it. They became part of our connection. They became part of our network. That was a huge, huge asset. Um, in this program and that definitely like helped me a lot and everyone I think. Awesome, thank you. Um, so now I want everybody to answer this question. What was your favorite class in, in the program? Lily, I'll start with you. Oh, it's a really tough, tough choice. Um, for me, it was really good. Like there are so many classes who are like more technical, like hard skills, like you learn how to do certain, certain like methods, like GHG accounting or LCAs and then it's like very much like a hands-on experience or so like coding classes but then on the other hand there's like a bunch of classes which is more like discussion based so because this area is such a like fast growing and complex field like sometimes you can learn the most when you're just like talking to people in the class every single week and then all the topics are literally like a story from yesterday or something so for me it was the combination of like these like very different but like very complementing aspects in all classes you were supposed to say capstone i know but then that would be very obvious so capstone is the culmination of all these things like you already have the skills you already have like these diverse themes and then you bring everything together and then you just produce an amazing thing at the end okay anna here's your opportunity jump in what's your favorite class in the program so just to give everyone context capstone is kind of like the final project that you have to do and you have to take a subject for that and lily and me we did a Coral Reef uh, Coastal Resilience Project in Florida with Chandler. So that's why we're supposed to say capstone. <laughs> it's our favorite subject. I love capstone. My capstone was the best. My project, I enjoyed it so much. I learned so much. Blue carbon credits. Uh, we're going to say Florida. I really liked it. That was one of my favorites. And then uh, I, again, I come from an innovation background slash product management, so technology. And I really wanted to learn more about energy because I had I didn't understand how the grid worked and everything. Uh, so one of the most um, most difficult classes I took, but like fascinating one, was energy markets and innovation. It was really rough. Uh, it was a lot of work, um, especially if you don't have an energy background. I I heard that people who had energy backgrounds were like, oh, this is easy. But for me, who I, I didn't have a, I, an idea of how like electrons went through and sustainability and like how that worked. It was a fascinating class. Uh, and then sustainability science, the suicide people are going to be like, oh, sustainability science. But I also understanding, you know, the overall science of how uh, environments work. Um, and Jenna Lawrence is like the best teacher ever, <laughs> uh, apart from Chandler, of course. Uh, but yeah, so many passionate teachers. Everyone's so passionate about their subject. I don't know what others come to mind, like, 
CBA, uh, yeah, it's hard to pick one, but I feel like these two I really enjoyed. Um, so yeah, that would be my answer. This three in Capstone. Thanks, Bridge. Uh, there were a couple that I really enjoyed, a lot of really great professors that genuinely care and present the subject matter well. But I have to say, I really enjoyed the uh, the climate science class that um, Dr. Previty teaches because um, it, take, it takes, I guess, some of the cutting edge climate modeling stuff and he kind of dives into it and gets into the uncertainties. And it's just like, instead of it just being like a box that spits out like, you know, forecasts for like doom, it becomes like something that's a little more palatable. And I think I learned a lot, even though I'm not a huge Python fan, you have to do some Python in the class and it kind of like forced me to like use it in like a, an applicable manner. So I, I enjoyed that. That was probably one of my faves. Tinas? Um, I'll give uh, two, one from sustainability science and one from sustainability management. I was obviously now in sustainability science, but I took about a, th a third of my classes out of the sustainability management um, track. So for sustainability science, um, environmental sustainability indicators, construction and use by uh, Alexander de Sherbrin. That class was amazing. It is quite technical. Um, he is the lead PI on the environmental performance index, um, which is like one of the biggest indices published on, uh, the environment, uh, in, in the world. And it's, so it was amazing to be able to learn from him, how he puts these things together. He's a fantastic teacher. And by the end of the class, you've built your own index in something you're passionate about and sustainability related, obviously. So um, I, I I love a class that has like direct real world, world application. And I was also able to do a little bit of research with him um, that came out of a class project uh, for that class with some of our classmates decided to keep working on it. And so that that just was a lot of fun and a very, um, a very useful class. The other one for sustainability management, corporate sustainability reporting and strategy with Celine was also amazing. It's pretty much all things you need to know about corporate ESG. She, her, her consulting group, I don't know how many of like the fortune 10 companies in the world are her clients, but they're like some of the biggest names out there and she's been doing it forever. She knows how to pull everything together and she really were like that also is a heavy load class. Um, I I consider it not technically challenging, but just the work requirement of that class is large. And you, it's a group project and you all have to work together otherwise you're not gonna get it done. Um, and by the end of it, you have a GRI report for a client that somebody in your group brings in and so again, it's something you have to show. It's very like uh, applicable into what the market needs right now. And it's just such a fluctuating space that understanding the history behind it a little bit and then the big players and how it's changing makes makes a really big difference um, in being able to, to, to learn valuable skills in that space. And Fia? I think um, I'll copy Tina's a bit and talk about two classes um, to bring up two different points. So I think one of one of the classes that helped my career a lot um, was, I swear, I should know the name, full name of this, Improving Measurement Through Water. And so I don't know, I TA'd for this, Im I should know the full improving, name. Improving, I know what you're talking about, Improving Health Through Environmental Measures, right? Yes. 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 By Dr. Um, Alexander Van Geen, I think that was a really cool class. The contents were really amazing and I got to work with him outside of the class and I also got my current job um, through one of the speakers in that class that he brought in one of the speakers and I connect with with her, connected with her and that was my reference to my current job. So that was definitely a huge part of my career but um, I think one of the things I wanted to speak on was it was a geochemistry kind of focused class and I was a bit comfortable with that because I had a chemistry background and um, that's something, one of the reasons I chose to take it because I was like, oh, maybe this will seem familiar with me. But the second class that I want to talk about is climate modeling by Yutian Wu. I had absolutely 
no experience in modeling at all whatsoever and I kind of step outside of my comfort zone to take that because it seemed interesting um it was about modeling um climates of like future projections and things like that I absolutely fell in love with modeling and that class and I currently what I do is basically model contaminants so I feel like I kind of combined those two classes and whatever I learned from those two classes is primarily what I do at my current work so I think they're both kind of up there for me one I was a bit comfortable with one that I was not and fell in love with so I'd encourage you to step outside your comfort zone as well and take classes that seem challenging, but definitely rewarding for sure. That is really great advice. And that was also a perfect segue into my next question for you all, which is how did you find your current role or how did you find internship or research opportunities through the program? And Fia, you just spoke to how important it it is to network and you know you got your current role because of a reference from a, a faculty member from a course you took so that is phenomenal did you find any other opportunities if anybody else wants to jump in you're more than welcome to as well but Fia if you wanted to elaborate more you have the floor sure I'll um I'll just add a quick note where yeah I definitely found one of my um contacts from who was a guest lecturer in one of my classes uh but there were a lot of different opportunities um just we had Columbia had had a lot of uh, events like mixers and there you would meet a lot of professors and just you know talk to them over a drink which is I think an incredible experience so I think those were also great opportunities where you you could talk to them talk to your peers and see what else is out there would anybody else like to jump in how you found your internship or research opportunities or even full-time opportunities? I can jump in. Um, I am not with like job job right now, like Fia um, <laughs> in the process, but for my research stuff, I kind of just badgered my, uh, the first teacher I really liked in the program. So I took a, a forest classes um, with Dr. Brendan Buckley and um, I encourage you to take this class. Uh, he's a gem of a guy, but I thought he was, yeah, he thought he was a cool dude. And so, you know, I asked him and he was like, no. And I asked him again. He's like, we don't have anything. And then I think I asked him like towards the end of class. I was like, well, you know, if you need someone to do something. And finally I timed it right. And he's like, all right, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, just if you want to engage in some of the research stuff or like interact with that, that community just um, just keep asking your professors, even if they're annoyed. He is a he is a gem of a human. I agree with you. I also have a very similar story with with like research and how you can actually get involved. Like, of course, like there are so many opportunities that are like more like structures, like there are internships and there are like research grants you can apply for. But I even emailed one of the professors who's now my supervisor before even applying to the program. And I was just like talking to him about like his research and what he's doing. So it was like kind of like setting up for um, a few months later. And then when I um, actually started my program, I was just like shooting him new emails again. Like now I'm here in the city and I'm just like keeping him updated. And essentially it was just like random people who did a similar thing in a similar group. Um, that's how our own research group just like started out of like nowhere so if you're like interested in in something definitely just like everyone's like so open to work with you on on because there are so many things you can um, get involved with so I would absolutely just copy that to to just like reach out and and you can get involved in so many things thanks anybody else um yeah so I mean I didn't get my current job through a Columbia link necessarily, but um, my experience at Columbia played a large role in them wanting to bring me on into a position they didn't even really know they wanted. Um, so uh, the, the, the group I'm willing, working for really started just in kind of solar billing and we've now expanded to utility management. And it was through conversations and then me being me talking about various aspects of GHG and ESG data and the kind of data they already have and 
what some of these big markets want to see and what the with the data they have, what they can already offer. And just, you know, when you finish these classes, you're going to be very knowledgeable on the subjects, being able to be knowledgeable on the subject. And then when we started having conversations with other potential clients or partners, um, having someone that knew what to say and how to talk about the subject matter, that that is what really targeted them to being like, oh, okay, uh, actually, we want to hire you, even though we didn't really know we wanted to expand into this part of the market space. So, um, and then also being able, I hate saying this, but uh, just being able to say that you have a degree from Columbia University uh, goes a long way. It really does. Um, when you, when I go to conferences or when people see my email signature now, or there's always like, oh, well, uh, oh, Columbia, wow, is it, it makes a difference. It just, it just does, um, whether I like that or not. Uh, and when you finish the program to your benefit as well. Um, but I'll echo what everybody here has said. There are a lot of opportunities. The only way you're going to miss them is if you don't take them. They get emailed out consistently. There are, there's a SPS job board, but there's a Earth Institute specific job board that out of all the uh, programs in SPS, only sustainability management and sustainability science has access to the Earth Institute job board, which has very specific jobs. Um, and like the other people said, I know, uh, I, and I can see so many of the professors I've taken classes with now are like, ah, oh, look at all these funds we just got for this cool new project with plastics and whatever. So there, there are a lot of opportunities. You, you just have to read your emails and check the boards every now and then go to the mixers, talk to the professors, share the things you're interested in, because also they're very well connected. So they, like I've had multiple people go, because uh, I actually did not take a for working and being in real estate a lot of uh, one class that had a partial focus on real estate outside of that everybody though knows people in real estate so they're always willing to connect me with their and they do connect me with their contacts in in the space that I work in so so just just you have to really kind of step up into that space and take advantage because it's all laid out in front of you you just need to step up and pick it up I love that. Um, the too long didn't read of that was uh, read your emails. <laughs> it's all in your inbox. Um, but I see that our Q&A is being absolutely flooded right now. So I we will jump to that. But before we do that, the last question that I have for you all is what is one piece of advice that you give to students in these programs? Anna, I'm going to start with you. Of course, um, I people. I would just say like get involved, like just like you know, like building up on what Tina just said is just like everything is laid out in front of you. Imagine you're like seated on this like magnificent dinner. You have like the cakes. You have all the vegan food. Yes, vegan, no meat because it's sustainable. You just gotta go and grab it, you know, and really like make the best out of it. Um, so I would say like network network with everyone, network with your professors, network with the people in the program, network with the people outside of the program, go to the mixers, volunteer for X or Y. Um, and just like, I feel like that network is the most valuable thing that you're gonna take out of this program. Administration, like everyone's so well connected and everyone like Tina said is just like, you're like gonna graduate from Columbia University. That's already so prestigious. Uh, so you know, wear that badge with honor and like make the best out of it. So just be be active. You know, if you the program, if you do it full time, I feel like you you have one year and a half, which is a lot of time to really build strong relationships, find great opportunities. Uh, maybe as an inter international student, have a an internship or be a a course reader. Now it's called right. Um, there's so many things that can come out of the program. So just be involved, even if you're tired, even if you're part time and you have a job, even if you have a baby. <laughs> so, you know, that like putting you on the spot. But like there's always opportunities of things. Go to Arts and Crafts on Tuesday, which, which is like a Suma tradition. Just go out there, like put yourself 
you know, out in the light, even if you're tired, even if you don't feel like it, you never know when a beer somewhere at a random cocktail is going to, you know, get you your next job or uh, get you to meet your next co-founder of something. So that would be my advice. Lily? I can definitely echo like everything Anna and Dina just said, but then also like, yes, with the events, but you can also actually join like a bunch of events, not just like within the sustainability community, but with the whole university. So sometimes like if you check out like other like, schools events, you actually have access to our um, programs and, and you can meet so many new people there and like just expand your views on in so many aspects. So definitely just don't be afraid of like reaching out to people because everyone wants to just help you and you're in this journey with your peers with your professors and and just everyone to work towards one single goal so definitely reach out see this yeah i think um echo read your emails um, and take advantage of the things that are included with being a student at Columbia, like the museum passport, where you have access to a ton of museums across the entire city. Um, these are things you're paying for, by the way. They're not just thrown in. Like, we pay for everything. So take advantage of the things you're paying for. Uh, there's a, a, a zip car membership through Columbia where like just figure out what are the things I get from being here and take advantage of it it makes life easier um it's it's whether you're a full-time student or a part-time student working part or full-time it it it's designed to make things easier and there's just there's just so much um my other advice would be if you really can't become good friends with someone who does. Um, Cause I can't tell you the amount of times I text friends events. I'm like, we go and they're like, where do you see that? So become good friends with the person who does read all their emails and they can tell you about the events. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that is definitely true. Cause there have been many times where Tina's would be like, Hey, do you want to go to this? And I'd be like, where you where'd you see that so definitely yeah, become becoming friends with someone who knows it or you become that person for sure I think I would also like to echo everyone by saying networking is really important but I'll add um I think a lot of people who got into this program or uh, are probably you know good at academics and are really care about grades and like that's a huge part of your focus and I think I I just like from my experience I think but if you have a quiz or a homework or something and you have an event, go to the event. It matters more. Your network, I think, matters more than a lot of like your perfect scores. I feel like from my experience, you don't need a perfect score to find a good job or get the most out of this program. That's definitely something I think I should have done more. I think I tried, but I definitely hung, got hung up more on grades sometimes coming from like directly out of academia so I think that's something to remember and I think the other thing I would add is having a somewhat uh, vague idea of the direction you want to go to that direction will change with the classes you take and that's okay but I think there's so many great classes and you're probably going to be interested in everything I think it's important to narrow it down a little bit so that you can get the most out of your time and money and focus on the classes that you think is going to help your career and obviously also try new ones here and there, but just having a narrow um, skeleton and then working from there, I think would be helpful. And last but not least, Bridge. Um, everyone had great stuff. Struggled being the last one. Um, I would say audit some classes. That is something I wish I did more. Um, so by auditing, you get to sit in on class sessions, but you don't have to do any of the homework or tests or any of that garbage, but you get to like learn and see and i know you know people can be busy or you're tired but you know it, all it takes is like showing up to like a, you know a class in like a different school or whatever to open your mind up to something completely different and in addition to you know suma and susk there's so many other environmental earth like science classes and de departments in the school and a lot of really smart professors and so you know if you want to free up a Wednesday evening to go sit on some like earth systems class you might find something that you really uh really enjoy so 
audit audit a class or two if you have the time. Thank you. So I'd now like to welcome my colleague Alfred, who will be helping with the Q and A. Hi, everybody. Um, it's such a pleasure joining and huge congratulations to our participants. I just want to give a big shout out to Olivia. She's been killing it in the Q&A chat. So answering a lot of questions quickly, um, which is awesome. I will say there are several themes that have been coming up through the Q&A and many of our panelists have been touching on them. Um, things like the network, uh, career advising, but there are some nuances, um, some nuanced questions that I think are really helpful for all of our participants to hear a little bit more about. And one of them I, um, I think that was, uh, you know, quite relevant was relating to kind of joining this program and not having necessarily a background in some of the technical um, areas that these courses might be teaching. So for example, um, uh, in terms of the, um, uh, let's say that you're, there's an element of the sustainability management program where you're going to be taking some um, more scientific lens courses and you don't have a science background. Um, how was that experience for you transitioning into a curriculum like that? Or alternatively, for those of you maybe um, in the SUSE program or the sustainability science program, maybe you took a, a green accounting course and you haven't been exposed to financial and managerial accounting. What was that experience like for you? What resources were there um, just to help uh, ensure that our, our admitted students don't feel intimidated by joining this learning community? Does anybody, oh, I'm so sorry, I should point to, does anybody want to take that on? Maybe you had like a unique background when you joined the program and, and you found the experience um, taking a course completely outside of what you studied in an undergrad. Do you, does anybody have like an experience like that? I, I can a little bit, although it's almost I, a, a little bit of the reverse of what you said, because my background is science and I took the uh, a writing class with Claudia Dreyfus. I would not consider myself a writer. Uh, and that was really me stepping outside of my comfort zone of what I feel good at and what I've been doing and what I knew. Um, and uh, it, it, it ended up being a course I absolutely loved uh, and just kind of general overview of the course. It's about writing about science principles to the greater public of non-science uh, backgrounded people. So, um, and I think we, um, part, part of it being a professional school, part of the way these programs are designed the, these programs are designed for people who are interested in sustainability, who might not have a very strong sustainability background, and to help you pivot into that space. So it's 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 inherent in the the classes and the way they're designed to be able to help people in those backgrounds, and so. Like uh, for Fia, uh, if I may, just Fia and I worked so close together with so many things. Um, the the geochemistry course, all the chemistry aspects of that were really easy for her. They're okay for me. I wasn't a chemist, but I've taken many chemistry classes. And for people in our class who had no background in that, that was really that was more challenging. But um, it's it's very doable. There's all there's there's a lot of resources, tutoring resources. Um, I had a, another friend in in the 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 indicators course I talked about, who she really doesn't have. She has a political science background, and she ended up taking a ton of the sustainability science classes. And now she works at the DOE, and she loves it. And she took a statistics tutoring from the university because they offer that. So, so there are resources to help you if you're un uncertain where you fall on that spectrum. I don't think personally any of the courses are like extremely, extremely hard science. There's, they, they all have an ask, even the more science you want still have an aspect of like, what's the kind of a bigger global sustainability like goal or picture in this space. 
Um, and, and that is because it's a professional, we're in a professional school and the, the, the objective of the courses is to help people pivot into this space more and kind of become a bridge between these two worlds, this like really intense, narrowly focused academic world, and then like the private NGO government sectors that maybe things are more broad and there's not, so how do we become a bridge between these worlds? And so uh, it's definitely doable. There are resources to help you. Just, just talk to people, talk to your TAs, talk to your professors, talk to friends. The readings are there. For some classes, you might just have to work a little harder, but I, it, I think it's very doable. I, I hope that answered the question. <laughs> that was brilliant. That was brilliant. I appreciate that. Maybe I didn't ask the question as thoughtfully. So that was, that was a brilliant response. So an, another question that came up, and I don't recall hearing the panelists discuss this, but Rita asked a great question relating to faculty advisors. Um, your access to faculty advisors, and um, if you, you know, if you were able to potentially switch advisors or have a preferred advisor, um, does anybody have kind of an experience or with their advisor and the advisor? I know the advisors are assigned. Um, you're able to to make your top selections, but ultimately then you're assigned an advisor. But does anybody have an experience with their advisor in terms of helping them throughout their journey? I definitely do. Uh, my advisor was great. Um, he was always um, like, you can just like ask any questions you have about like opportunities and classes. And then um, there was the like initial kind of like um, meeting with him, just like talking through about each of the classes I, I might want to take. And then like his input, because at the very beginning, I was like completely lost, like which direction I should like go into. So it was very helpful. And then over the semesters, like whatever questions I had, it was always just like seeing everyone else. So like I would get all the inputs from everyone. So it, it's, it's definitely a very good connection because of course they are also very well connected within the university and outside as well. Awesome, thanks Lily, I appreciate that. Um, and then uh, this is another question that I saw coming up was the idea of balance. Um, balance, especially for those of you on the panel that maybe both worked and then um, were going to school part time. Somebody boldly even asked, uh, is it possible to go full time to the program and work, which I would discourage. That's my own personal opinion. This is Columbia University. It's going to be a rigorous, which is exactly what you want, a rigorous academic experience. But um, does anybody on the panel wish to kind of speak to the idea of balancing both kind of uh work as well as school while enrolled in the program i can take that yeah uh so to be honest i was actually first when i first got here to new york so as an international student you have to take the program full time uh you gotta do that i think like in the last semester you you kind of get if you want to a special permission uh but i was working remotely for a company in mexico and i feel like i got so distracted uh, from the program during my first semester because of that. I was not like really here. I was doing the program full time and then doing some work. Uh, so, you know, it was just like really chaotic. Uh, so I would say focus, like if you're here, just be here, you know, just be really present again. As I said, there's so many things going on. There's so many opportunities. I, if I don't remember, I think you can as an international student start working after your second semester or on your second semester as a TA, you can work at Columbia. Uh, and there's so many opportunities there that are way more related maybe to sustainability or the programs that you're in. Um, so it's not a bad idea. And again, I know it's a privilege doing something full time. It's an investment of time and investment of money. But I say like, if you're already coming to Columbia, just be here, look for opportunities here uh and a lot of things are gonna probably like come up so just be here be present thank you anna christina let's let's see so i think um right now we're approaching towards the um the end of the uh the panel um so i think we're going to take one more question um and this one um i'm gonna uh i'm gonna go for uh sakifa wrote uh specifically about the case studies component of the program how are your experience engaging with real world clients um, as full time students? So some of you guys I know were full time in the program, um, and 
were there any international cases? I'm assuming there were, but does anybody want to speak to kind of the, of the idea of taking on case studies in certain courses um, in the program? And then there was capstones as well, maybe <laughs> so, which were live courses. Um, I can uh, add to that a little bit. I think for me, it was an intimidating challenge a little bit because I personally had didn't have a lot of professional experience. But I think for our capstone project, and there have been other classes where he had to work, like the LCA class, we had to work with a client and do a life cycle assessment for that client. So that was a new process for me, but I think. I learned the most from working with these real case studies because you're actually, like I mentioned, I think towards the beginning, you're actually seeing how it's applied. It's definitely a learning curve, I think, if you don't have that experience. But you, I think your biggest asset is you're working with people who have that. So I think leaning on your peers for the things that you don't know and then, you know, contributing stuff that you do know, working together as a team is what I learned, I think, the most in my capstone class. And then coming up with the deliver the deliverable that you're proud of and seeing how it's actually applied. So that would be uh, my advice on that. Yeah, I guess I can hop in real quick as well. And that's like like for, uh, I think Fia, you mentioned briefly your LCA class, Christopher, Christopher Minor can like, he's on PepsiCo's like speed dial for LCA questions, right? So like the, the people we are learning from and studying under are, some of the most well-versed experts in this subject matter and have incredible experience doing doing the this kind of uh, consulting and case study type work right so the, and the way they design the classes is so that like you are ready to have those conversations when it's time to have those conversations so i wouldn't worry so much about that and uh, just make sure you're keeping communication open. If you find that it's an area that you have less, less expertise in, uh, hopefully somebody in your group will make up for that. Like very frequently, especially in some of the SUMA classes I took, like one person has a finance background, one person has a marketing background. I maybe have a science background. Somebody else has a communications background. You, you're like a whole little team. There's like a reason that you try and when you're putting together your teams, you try and communicate like, oh, what 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 do you bring to the table, whatever. And and if something's missing, then you you talk to TA teacher whoever, um, and and you fill those holes. Uh, but yes, it's one of the greatest parts of the program is how real world applicable they make the projects that's that's like the point you need to be able to leave here and go to another group and apply those skills like immediately so yeah thanks tina so now i'll hand it back over to chandler thank you so much uh, again thank you to our panelists for taking the time to be with us today we look forward to welcoming our new cohort this fall we will be following up with a recording of this panel in the next few days. So thank you again and have a great day wherever you are in the world.